Hey guys, I'm Dave, and today I've got a bit of an update for you on BB-8. Uh, it's been a while since I did a video about him, um, and that's because it's been taking time to get the parts that I need. Um, simply because it, a lot of it's just custom, so it's not like I can walk into a shop and buy some of the stuff that I've, I've got here. Um, and I'll explain all this in this video, um, what's, what's new and uh, where we're going. So... As you already know, BB-8's head is done. Here he is. Um, and from the very beginning, I wanted to get his head done 100% so it's all working. And it is. So there it is. He's got a voice. And all his light is working. Everything else, all the um, wireless, the remote, all fine. So um, the next stage would be, obviously, to do the body. Now, uh, two videos ago, uh, you can check that one up there. Um, I actually had an inner sphere which I um, had made, and I decided after making that sphere and trying out the panels on that sphere that um, it was not the not the route that I wanted to go down, <laughs> um, and that's partly because of um, this. This is the drive system, and partly because um, I was having issues with the way this inner sphere had been printed um, and I'd made these panels. So all the panels for BB-8 here, as you can see, is a big pile of panels and, you know, there's uh, eight of these all together. And um, these are not finished. Obviously, they're all rough and I've got writing on them and stuff like that. Um, I've yet to fill the gap and sand them and paint them. Um, and then, of course, you've got your disc panels. So here's a completed one. There you go. It's a completed panel. On the inside, it's all rough. It's got writing on it. You know, you can tell that it's 3D printed. And on the other side, uh, you can barely tell that it's a 3D print. It looks like a proper a thing. So obviously, you have um, the panel. These <laughs> these go on like so. Obviously, all the way around. And then they need to attach to an inner sphere. So. Like I say, the inner sphere that I had was a 3D printed one and uh, it just wasn't working for what I wanted to do. Uh, and like I say, it's because of this drive. So let's move BB-8's head slightly out of the way. Move them panels. And um, I'll show you what's going on with this. So I've had this custom made, which is why it's taking time, because stuff like this is not cheap. Uh, all this aluminium has been cut to specification uh, and then I've bolted it together and so on and so forth. Um, and basically, the way this will work is, this is like the main inner body of BB-8. So things are going to be attached to this. Um, this servo, for example, uh, goes in here. And on top of this servo, there'll be magnets. And on top of the magnets will be BB-8's head. So he'll be all the way up here like so. And um, also on this will be... Um, some of the servos, so there'll be a servo on the side here, and there'll be one round the back as well. And that's because this is the drive body. So as you can see, there's a couple of motors on there. And that would be here, like so. In fact, it'll be this way around. So let me just turn it that way. So that'll be like that inside the body. Motor here, motor here. And uh, they will be attached to the inner sphere right here and right here. And there's going to be an axle that goes right through the centre of this body, uh, right through here and attached to this plate here. And the way it'll work is um, there'll be a servo to turn it like this and there'll be a servo to turn it like this. But instead of this thing moving, it's actually this bit in the middle. So if I pick it up, so this will go like this and it'll also go like this. Now... The, um, there's a lot of torque in this. There's loads of torque in these motors. Uh, and my biggest worry was that I would break the 3D print with the amount of torque that this is going to have in it. Um, now, I don't think it's happened um, to anybody in the club, but it was something that I was concerned of. Um, so I decided to go down the route of having an aluminium in, in a sphere. So um, there's a design that I'm using that uses like these hubs. So these go onto here and then you get that and that will mount onto the ends of the motors, 
which are here. Let me show you that again. So they'll eventually go like that, and I'll have a bit of a, a bit of rod to bridge that gap. And then these, as you can see, I've got an interesting design. You see, like these double patterns, and essentially there'll be ribs on here. So I'll end up with a whole bunch of ribs, and the ribs will connect to each hub. So you can imagine a rib coming around like that from there all the way around to the edge to about there, and then um, there'll be a whole bunch of these. So I've got an image that I can put up on the screen for you now so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. And again, it's a custom made job. So I'm having to have all the aluminium, uh, aluminium cuts or aluminum for you Americans, um, cut special like this one so that I can have this inner sphere uh, created. And that would be a hell of a lot stronger than a 3D printed one. And it'll be able to handle having this drive system in there. So, um, it all takes time. So that's been done. Um, I'm just in talks with the same company that made this one for me uh, to, we've got to get the measurements correct. They've got to be really, really correct um, so that the panels like this don't end up with gaps. So when one panel meets another panel, like so, we want that to be uh, without, gap, without a gap. Uh, which means um, the standoffs that will go on this sphere have to be exact because if they're too low or too high I could either end up with an overlap which I can't fix or I'll end up with a gap like that so it's taking time to uh, make sure that the company can make them um, to these exact specifications which they can obviously they've just got to figure out from the designs that I've provided them um, that they can do it uh, one of the issues that we're having is obviously uh, it's designed in CAD, so it's a flat image. I'll put it up on the screen. I wish I put a bend in it. And the bend actually uh, stretches the metal slightly. So that means it'll affect where the holes are, which means it'll have an effect on the way everything mounts to those brackets. So <laughs> these are the sort of things, the sort of problems that I've got to think about and I've got to uh, fix so that... Um, this is correct and obviously when I'm spending so much money on it as well it's it's a worry it is a worry that I spend so much money on something like this and um, it isn't right because uh, you can't you can't change it once it's done not without more money so um, that's all in the works uh, another thing that I've had done is this <laughs> very super important chunk of metal right here this is again another custom made um, thing for this drive and it's like this is essentially the heart of BBA uh, BB-8 and the reason I say that is because it's part of this drive so inside here you'll see that there's a white block and that's actually a solid 3d printed block um, and that's what the axles go through so there's one main axle that goes right through it like that through this hole and there's two short axles that go here and here um, so the main big one that goes right the way through is what makes it go like this and the short ones that go on either side are what make it go um, like this if I can grab hold of that and give you an idea of how that swings like that um, so you can imagine there's quite a lot of work going on with that 3d printed block and it turns out that people have done this in the past have had issues with um, the, the shafts bending out of the plastic because the PLA that it's printed in isn't strong enough for the torque um, of the servos. So uh, similar to this one, it's like a gearbox. I don't have them yet, uh, but it's uh, a servo like this with a gearbox on it. And um, yeah, it's it's breaking the plastic. So the only real way around that was to have something like this made. Um, so there was a guy in the club who's who's making them one by one and uh, I bought one from him so here it is this is going to essentially going to go in there so I'll be replacing that plastic one and this will have there you go it'll have a shaft going right the way through and two short ones on either side um, and that's that's essentially what holds it all together and it'll be what make makes BB-8 animated and make it move so as you can imagine <laughs> Not only does this all take time, having things custom made, working things out so that the panels fit to um, things like this, uh, it, it all takes time. 
And not only does it take time, it takes money. So um, obviously I'm paying for this mostly out of my own pocket. Uh, some of you fantastic supporters out there are helping on Patreon. So if you want to check out Patreon, there's a link in the description. Uh, some guys, you know, um, help me with that. And, and that money directly goes to the cost of things like this. Uh, so like this, for example, this small thing is a motor controller. And this is what will control these two motors so that BB-8 can actually move. Uh, this is, you know, essentially a specialist product because it's not something you can just get willy-nilly. It's mostly using RC stuff, so things like planes, remote control cars, and things like that. This, this little tiny circuit board which controls the motors cost 150 pounds. <laughs> but it's got such an important job that I can't not have it, so, yeah, you can imagine this this costs 150 pounds. So that's that like a hundred and hundred and seventy eighty dollars. This was ninety dollars, which is like you know sixty five seventy pounds. Uh, so there you go. You know that's the level of things that we're at. Um, I'm not complaining. It's going to be amazing when it's finished, <laughs> and and that's currently where I'm at. So everything you see in front of you right now is is essentially BBA. Everything's here. Uh, with the exception of some custom made ribs all the panels are done um, i've got a few more of these to do i've got three more of these to do uh, and obviously painting them and all that sort of business which is just cosmetic so i'm not too worried about that um, i will be putting my order in for the ribs uh, hopefully in the next few days and uh, once we have figured out the right correct measurements for the brackets um, and then that will be here within the week Putting this together will only take me a couple of hours, so that's going to be a big significant thing, um, which is cool. And I'm currently in talks with uh, a company in Scotland who um, do all the robotic stuff. So this is where I got this from, um, because importing stuff from America is is, is pretty difficult. Um, and, and in the UK, we don't really have um, any large-scale robotic stuff going on. So it's difficult for me to find the correct parts in the UK. Um, and that brings me to another problem because I'm converting from Imperial to metric, um, finding it easier just to keep it Imperial. Why Why you guys are Imperial, I have no idea. But anyway, it's working out anyway um, because understandably, because there isn't that much robotic stuff in the UK going on, uh, everything that's imported is Imperial anyway. So um, not that much of a problem. Uh, so yeah, I'm talking to them, trying to find the right parts that I need, uh, chain drives and pulleys and all that sort of stuff, and, and hopefully I'll be putting that order in with them um, within the next few days. But unfortunately, because it's got most of it, the bulk of that order is going to be imported from America, it's going to take about six weeks for it to get here. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a long, drawn-out process, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Like I said, you know, um, things like 3D printing I can get on, I did this, I did all these... I did all these in like two days, so uh, getting them ready for the aluminium, and then obviously the aluminium has been done in the UK, so that won't take very long for it to turn up. Uh, so I've got plenty to do in between waiting for the parts to come. The biggest, most expensive part is obviously the drive system, uh, like, you know, that costing a, a single huge sum. Um, the other servos that I've got to buy, two more servos, one to drive the main um, shaft that goes through here, one to drive the head, um they're really expensive uh you've got to buy a gearbox plus a servo um you can buy them done ready done for 275 dollars each i need two uh which i'm not going to do because it's far too expensive but i found uh, a company in germany that will do me the servo for 150 euros so whatever that works out to be in pounds uh and i can buy the gearbox on its own from the company in America for $75. So I can save myself quite a bit there. Um, and obviously, uh, because I'm having it imported, I need to do the order in one because I don't want to buy all the parts in bits because I'll get charged for customs charges on every piece. So if I do it in one big box, I'll only get one charge. <laughs> so there we go, guys. Um, I think I've brought you all up to speed. Um, things are going to start happening a little more regularly now. 
Uh, obviously, over the Christmas period, there was a bit of a lull because of Christmas and family stuff and, and just waiting for things to turn up. Uh, the next thing that's going to be happening will be this. This is going to be um, the inner sphere. So I'll be putting that order in as soon as we've got the measurements sorted. Uh, we're ready to go with that. Um, and then, you know, and when that turns up in the next week or so, two weeks, three weeks, uh, I'll do a video of, of putting this together. Um, I, I I shouldn't put it together right away because the drive system's got to go in there, but I kind of want to um, make a move on getting all the panels done. So if I put the sphere together and, put the, and, and do all the panels and finish them off and paint them, um, at least then, at the very least, BB-8 visually will look like he's done. He'll look complete. He'll be basically a static build. Um, but that'd be a nice place to be because that means I only have to finish this off, which is a bit of a big, big cost, which is why it's taking time. Um, and it's not so much of an issue. I could even potentially take him to a show fairly soon. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff going on this year. Um, I may not have the drive system working, but he'll be done. So I think that's a good goal to set myself is to get the uh, inner sphere done, finish off the panels and get him put together. Because um, it's, it's good to, when you're doing a project like this, to to have a goal to aim for rather than, you know, it's a big project. So if I'm just like, my goal is to get a moving BB-8, it's going to take me six months to get there, maybe more. Uh, I'll feel like I'm never getting anywhere because it's taking so long. So that's why I was like, right, let's do BB-8's head to 100%. First, done, dusted. Quite a nice sense of achievement getting that done. So I, I, I think splitting it up like that is a good idea. Uh, otherwise, because I, I, I just don't want to get fatigued doing it. You know, get bored of doing the project <laughs> or think, oh my God, it's costing far too much. Um, I could do with that money myself. Whatever. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it. I've brought you up to date and I hope you're as excited as I am to actually, you know, really get this guy together and, and moving and I hope to bring him to shows like Insomnia and, and Eurogamer and, and things like that um, so that you can meet him as well because especially you guys on Patreon as well because you've partly funded this so you know as much as it belongs to me it kind of belongs to you as well um, so it'd be nice for you to actually be able to come along and, and, and see it and have a go and <laughs> <laughs> Whatever else. All right, guys. So, like I say, all right, BB-8. Okay. <laughs> yeah, might be going a little bit stir crazy over here. Anyway, if you want to check out um, more information, little teasers and stuff like that on the project, um, either follow me on Twitter or check out the Patreon page if you want to help out uh, and have a look at what I've got on offer on there. I really appreciate your help. Shout out again to Ultimaker uh, for making this entirely possible because if it wasn't for them, I would never have been able to 3D print any of this stuff and it would have just been a pipe dream. So thanks Ultimaker once again for loaning me your printer. Um, and again, thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping support some of the serious, serious costs of this project. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. All right, guys. Bye. <laughs>